Fresh spinach, lettuce, and a variety of greens may be available at the store all year, but these aren't heat-loving plants that we can grow through the warm season in our home gardens. If you want your own homegrown superfood in the summertime, consider amaranth, malochia, and sweet potato greens. These are just a few leafy vegetables worthy of the label Texas Summer Greens. What's up everyone? It's Scott from New Garden Road, always out here to inform, inspire, and elevate you. Encouraging biodiversity and restoring habitat is my mission, one garden at a time. One of the reasons I wanted to share this with you is because I've been on a quest for more seasonal and regenerative nutrition. And leafy greens are typically harder to come by throughout the heat of summer here in Texas and other locations. Mass-produced produce just isn't the same. A lot of time it lacks the flavor, the freshness, and certainly the nutritional value. And many times this produce has traveled thousands of miles just to get to your dinner plate. One of the first questions that I had was, what are warm season greens? What the heck are they? I don't know. Ever since I started gardening, I've been utilizing a local planting guide. There's a column that says warm season greens. It doesn't specify, but as I have set out to grow my own fresh, nutrient dense, and sustainable produce, it's become more clear to me what these options are. Whenever it's hot, wherever you're growing leafy greens, this could be applicable to you. These are grown globally in similar conditions. I'm just highlighting my central Texas garden. The heat tolerance will vary with some of these. A lot of times I'll grow something early into the summer and it just won't really be able to make it into July and August whereas I have some that I can grow from late spring all the way through November and quite often it's the unique microclimate and specific sun exposure in the garden that plays a role in their success. Some of these are great for growing in containers and that could help you if you have a patio or an apartment garden while others are going to need more room to grow. The first one that I want to talk about is Malochia. This is also known as Egyptian spinach or jute leaf. This is widely known as a vitamin rich superfood and it first became popular in Egypt and the Middle East. The leaves and the tender stems are edible. I direct seeded about a dozen of them directly into one of my raised beds in early May. Once they got about two feet tall, I topped them. That encourages some side branching and more leaf production. The first time I tasted one of these leaves in the garden, I thought it was absolutely delicious. It's got a savory type flavor. Some people think it's mucilaginous in texture. I didn't really pick up on that. It's something that you can eat raw in sandwiches or tacos. And it's also something that's traditionally prepared in stews. Now that we're getting into August, I'm starting to see a flower for the first time, but I do have a successive planting that I started in seed trays in early July, and I'm hoping to get another crop. Amaranth is another great option. You might not necessarily think of this one as a leafy green because it's typically grown for its grain. Amaranth is said to have originated in Central America, and it's rich with phytonutrients, antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals. I have grown this as a leafy green for many years. Originally, I purchased a pack of seeds from Botanical Interest, and I believe that I've probably got a another couple of packets over the years, but this is one that will volunteer in my garden season over season. That's something that I've become accustomed to and essentially I plan for it. I know what those seedlings look like as they emerge. I can plant around them and I can thin them out and use them as microgreens. These do seem to go to flower a little bit more quickly than some of the other greens and that's something I welcome because I know they're going to reseed themselves, but oftentimes I'll take off that flower head and scatter a little bit throughout my garden just to ensure that I get a crop the next season. I've never tried to capitalize on the grain that my plants produce because it's more likely you'd need about a thousand or ten thousand of these plants to get enough to do something with. So I know you're probably familiar with sweet potatoes, but did you know that they have edible greens? And they have a nutrient content that's similar to spinach. But you can't grow spinach in the middle of summer. Sweet potato greens contain beneficial polyphenols, anthocyanins, and loads of dietary fiber. I will say sweet potato greens aren't necessarily my most favorite green to eat raw. They tend to have a more grassy, warm flavor. But I do want to talk about how I like to mix them with other greens which makes them more palatable. You could certainly cook them down and they're very nutritious. While I don't think that Malochia or Amaranth would be suitable to grow in containers, although I've never tried it, I've got some videos on growing sweet potatoes in containers. You could grow these in partial sun and they're definitely going to produce some edible leaves for you. Now I want to touch on the category I like to call pseudo spinach. All these varieties, even though they have spinach in the name, they're not truly related to spinach. The one exception would be Swiss chard, which I'll be discussing shortly. The first one is Gynura, also known as longevity spinach. I'm growing two varieties, a light green and another variety called Okinawan purple. It tends to show more of that purple color in the cooler season. So right now in the middle of August, it's not showing a whole lot of that color. But if you flip it over on the backside, you can see that it does have a little bit of a purple tone. You may be able to pick up
up on that. I've been growing both of these varieties in containers for several years. They're easy to propagate. They are a little bit frost tender, so I like to give them some extra protection in the winter. They are highly nutritious. I really prefer to eat them raw. I don't typically cook with them, but I'll add them to a variety of dishes. There are so many varieties of Swiss chard, and I'm growing several in containers this year. And I have one plant that's been growing in a raised bed for over a year now. I want to focus on one called Perpetual Spinach. This one has a great flavor. It's kind of sprite, kind of citrusy, and I like to harvest them really young. They're quite flavorful. You can cook with them. You can eat them raw. It's definitely a nutritious green. And many times, these plants will last more than one year. They really are a more cool season plant, but I've been able to get away with growing them throughout the summer by offering them limited exposure. The ones that I have growing in containers are on the northeast side of my house. They get some morning sun and some dappled light, and with some steady water and fertilization, they'll produce some nice leaves throughout the season. Have you heard of Malabar spinach? This is a vining type, and it's definitely one that's considered more mucilaginous in texture. If you're not a big fan of okra, you might not like this one. There are at least two types of Malabar spinach, a red stemmed and a green stemmed. One year I grew the green stem from a little four inch start and it grew up and over an eight foot trellis. So that made it about 16 foot in length. I like to harvest these leaves when they're really tender and young and eat them fresh. But I have been experimenting with sauteing some of the larger leaves and I found them to be really good. This is another plant that similar to amaranth will reseed aggressively if you let it. This year I didn't actually plant any in the garden but I have several volunteers. One of them sprouted in a place I wasn't expecting it to and that was a pot that I grew some jalapenos in last year. Lucky for me I was growing some food and I didn't even know it. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention Moringa. This is a nutrient dense superfood. I've got a dwarf variety that I'm growing in a fabric pot this year. This is loaded with nutrition. All parts of this plant are edible with the exception of the roots and it is considered a complete source of protein. You can dry the leaves and grind them up into a powder or you can use them fresh in salads and sandwiches as I do. So you really have to experiment with these warm season greens. Find out which ones you like the best, which ones grow in your area, what time of year they grow in. One thing I like to do is mix them up into different combinations and I found that by adding some fresh seasonal herbs this really lifts the flavor. Most of the time I end up making a really small salad. It's not something I add some dressing to but I might eat it with some avocado and a spring roll, a sandwich, or some tacos. Herbs like mint, lemon balm, basil, and sorrel just to name a few will really add a lift of flavor to these greens. Oh, pretty bird. Plants. Why you gotta back up so much? Oh well, it's urban gardening, right? There goes the sweat. I think that's it. I get the bird watch. Put the sip of water. Is that it? Now check out more awesome gardening videos on my channel. Like this video and follow New Garden Road for weekly content. You can grow your own food. Keep it organic.